Hey folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. I am here in southern Cuba, off the south coast of a little island chain, and we are diving on the Jardines de la Reina, or the Gardens of the Queen. It's our first dive and a little blowy, so I apologize for the wind noise. I'll try to clean that up later. We're gonna have some fun. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I've been excited about diving in Cuba, specifically at the Jardines de la Reina, the Gardens of the Queen. I have several videos in the works outlining roughly 20 dive sites there, as well as the liveaboard used for this trip, and an additional video highlighting the three days spent in Havana for those interested. For those who are unfamiliar with the Jardines de la Reina, it is a region that for years has been touted as one of the premier dive sites in the Western Hemisphere. Situated off the southern coast of Cuba in the Caribbean, the Gardens of the Queens consist of a vast area with countless islands, reefs, beaches, and flats, forming a large archipelago of about 200 kilometers or 125 miles in length. It encloses the Gulf of Anna Maria, a shallow bay, roughly 10,000 square kilometers or 3,900 square miles, with an average depth less than 40 feet, 12 to 13 meters. The myriad of islands and mangrove forests makes for a unique ecosystem. It is remote, some 60 miles out from our departure port of Jucaro on the southern coast of Cuba. Please pardon my mispronunciation of Jucaro in some of the clips. It is roughly a five and a half to six hour boat ride. We left at night and arrived for our daily dose of four dives per day with two on the last day. As you may have imagined, my expectations for this trip were high. There were highlights, lots of reef sharks, nurse sharks, turtles, rays, giant grouper, and some colorful fish, but not as many as anticipated, except for the sharks. We spent most of our dives around Cayo and Clitas, a large key roughly in the middle of the archipelago. We moored the main boat on the west end and then moved to the east end for a few days and then finished back at our original mooring site to close out the last couple days. The mangrove forests we saw were located mostly in the eastern and northern sections of the key. On the south side of the archipelago, the overall reef slopes about 70 degrees with many developed coral heads and a lot of channel and groove formations. Most of the dive sites here are on the south shore of the archipelago that make up Jardines de la Reina. All of this excitement, however, was tempered by what I can only call the blight impacting the coral. The corals have been devastated, bleaching, disease, dead coral everywhere. The crew acknowledged the impacts of prolonged months of 90 plus degree water temperature, outflowing to the reefs after warming in the shallow Anna Maria Bay. The crew and government agent who spoke to us about the reef insist the reef are on the mend, but I am not convinced. Rising global water temperatures are not going away. While colder months have dropped the temperature back to roughly 83, 84 degrees, which is what we had during our mid-November trip, these higher temperature cycles will only come back when summer returns in March and April. You can see in this video examples of the impact. This was not just one or two reefs, it was basically all, including deeper reefs as well as the shallow ones. And it's not just the hard corals. Sea fans and gorgonians were impacted too. This is not a Cuban problem. Marine warming has accelerated in the past few years. 2022 and 2023 were particularly bad. The entire Caribbean highlights that issue. If you look at the NOAA surface temperature charts, you can clearly see the extreme increase in temperature impacting the corals. This animation, I am running in reverse, shows surface temperatures starting November 28, 2023 and going back to August 30th 
of 2023. July and August were brutal. All underwater video was shot with an iPhone 14 Pro. These next few clips of giant pillar coral, for me, most clearly highlight the devastation. These magnificent structures may never recover. I was able to find data on water temperatures at the Jardines de la Reina from a study published in 2018. You can see the rise in average surface temperature. If we simply extend the trajectory to 2023, you can see that the numbers jive with what our temperatures were. This is not sustainable. Water temperatures over 90 degrees for any period of time will continue to kill coral. This is not a new issue. Ocean warming has increased for decades. I just hope we haven't reached the tipping point. We were told by the government agent that they only allow roughly 1,120 people per year to dive in a national park. That number doesn't seem to jive for me. We had 28 divers on our boat and saw two other dive boats out there. Uh, maybe not as big as ours, but possibly the same number of divers between the two. That's 56 divers during our week alone. My understanding is that they do limit diving in September and October, but that still leaves 10 months, roughly 44 weeks, which means they'd have to limit it to 25 divers per week. They must have meant for that one single liverboard, not in total. I'm trying to show the impact to as many different corals as I possibly can. I'm not trying to distress you, but I'm just trying to document. I'm not a marine biologist, but keep an eye on the damaged coral. You'll see plenty of them that appear to display signs of black, white, red, and yellow band diseases, dark spots, white plague, bleaching, uh, ciliate infection, and the sea fans show signs of aspilagosis. In shallower water, I also saw what I believe to be some kind of algae growing on many of the Gorgonians. I don't know what this is. I am not trying to dissuade anyone from visiting Jardines de la Reina, nor am I bashing Cuba for the situation. The boat and crew were wonderful and helpful and very pleasant. The Cuban Fisheries Department is trying to protect this unique ecosystem. We were each assigned one kind of fish to count and track on every dive, and we did that as part of those efforts. Mine was the Creval Jack, and I only saw one. This is climate change, pure and simple. I'm just the messenger. 
If you are planning to go to Jardines de la Reina to see sharks, large grouper, or crocodiles, go for it. If you are going to see corals, you may be disappointed. So we're on our way back to Juracao. Uh, this is day seven. Uh, we've done 20 dives. Uh, two were aborted due to weather. This has been quite the experience. It came to what I believed was going to be the most beautiful and pristine reef I have ever seen. Jardines de la Reina, Gardens of the Queen. That was my fault. My expectations were super high. Mother Nature has changed some of that, according to the dive masters and some of the people we've talked to uh, in the marine biology for Cuba, that the water temperature in this area had reached 90 and sustained for several months, almost half a year, which has bleached and damaged many of the reef systems, including sea fans, multiple corals, and it's unfortunate and very distressing. So, the climate change is real. It's something we need to think about addressing more quickly if it's not already too late. But a beautiful, I can absolutely see this would be an incredible, beautiful place. The reef damage is significant. I saw quite a bit of wildlife, a lot of sharks, but the coral damage is significant. I spent a lot of time taking video of the coral specifically so that I can uh, hopefully send this off to places like Woods Hole for them to further their research knowing that they had been here in 2016 documenting the reef systems. So it was a wonderful excursion and I loved it, but the health of the reef is something to be concerned about. Stay tuned, I have more video on Cuba and the Jardines de la Reina in the works, so keep an eye out. Remember my friends, go explore, get wet!